I gotta run an errand. I promise when I'm back, I'ma feed my kid a carrot. Damn, this stuff is tough, man. I thought it was inherent. I'm trying to be a parent. Just a carrot, I'm folks. Be a parent. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta drink, cause that shit can be kind of stressful. Sometimes you hit the plunk, cause that green will help you rest, yo. You know your ass be slacking when you gotta look up things on YouTube. Like, bro, bro how you wipe your baby boo boo? Now, welcome, welcome to, to the, the podcast. podcast. Trying to parent and make moms laugh. Who you know got it like a king's family. Amanda and Sean, that's the name, G. Yeah. yeah. Now, welcome to the podcast. Trying to parent and, and make pops laugh. Who you know got it like a king's family. Amanda and Sean, that's the name, G. Yeah. yeah. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Welcome to the show. Vente Cinco. 25. 2-5, folks. 2-5. Oh, oh, oh. You good? Mm-hmm. You good? Mm-hmm. All right. good? I am good. We are back. Another episode. Nina is in the room. In the yes, building. Yes, I am talking about you. So, if this all goes to hell <laughs> and everything starts falling down and you see it in the recording, <laughs> you'll know why. Good old Nina. Sanchez. But before we get into any of that stuff, let's get social. Social. With social media. <laughs> Alrighty. Take it away. Y- y'all, you know the deal. Instagram and Facebook, trying the number two parent. Go on and give us a follow. Um, interact with our our feed. You the know. Feed, interact with the feed. Interact with the feed. And uh, it, whatever you're listening on uh, the podcast app, go ahead and please give us five stars. Leave a nice review. Five. Cinco. Cinco stars. Cinco stars. I don't know how to say star. Stars. Stella? Sounds about right. S- so, we know some so Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> don't quote me on that. Um, yeah. And then um, YouTube, if you want to watch our lovely videos, um, we just reconfigured ourselves. Yeah, just switch spots. And trust me, it was harder than it looked. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Go on and give us a watch and follow on YouTube at Trying Space, the number two space parent. Um, Yeah. I appreciate you guys watching. We're getting some watches here, for sure. I feel like many watches as we are viewers. But anyways, who cares? Next. I digress. I digress. Um, What's next? Our phone number, maybe. Hey. This is crazy. Here's my number. If you listen closely. 360-450-5008. So call me, baby. Give us a call. Could I have Kat call in nice. next week or something? Awesome. Have her talk about something. I'm sure she's something got interesting. lots to talk about. That I'm sure she does. So let's hop right into it. Since it was such an exciting week. It was not. It, it was, was not that of exciting of a week. Maybe. We were both just really busy. It was my last week of work. I was trying to wrap up all of the things. We were both working till like six, seven o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. Every day. Yeah. So oh. very busy week. Yeah. Um, you know, we were gone all the whole week before, so we had a lot of. Yeah, I had so. a lot of catching up to do in general, and then getting it head. Mm-hmm. So. Excuse me. Wow. I did it right in the mic. I apologize for that, you guys. Uh, <laughs> on some good news, the Lakers are currently up 2-1 to one against the Warriors. The Suns are down 2-1 to one to the Nuggets. That's not good news. But they play tonight. So by the time you're hearing this, it could either be 3-1, two, two. or you guys are in big trouble, or 2-2. Two, two. And you're having a comeback. Unfortunately, Chris Paul hurt himself again, so he is out. Ugh. Consistency is key. Consistency. He's always hurt. Gosh. Um, like we said, not a whole lot happened this week. Uh, but I feel like the week flew by because not a whole lot happened in our lives, but a whole lot happened in our offices. Lots of work going on. Oh, and then Nina. I took her to the vet on went to. Oh, yeah. She does not have. Uh, she does not Hodgkin's have. lymphoma. <laughs> She does not have Cushing's disease, Cushing's. but a part of me kind of wish that she did because now they have to do an ultrasound on her abdomen and see if she has uh, some type of liver issue going on, whether it's liver failure, 
liver disease, inflammation of the liver. They mm-hmm. don't know. So they're going to do an ultrasound and I don't know when that's going to be it. So you want to talk about how cheap it's been though? Uh, yeah. For Nina. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it, it, and initially in the States when they were talking about the possibility of her having Cushing's disease, because they, when we were living in Washington, the original vets noticed that she had the raised liver enzyme. Um, but they said the test for Cushing's disease was going to be like $500, which is why they didn't want to initially do it. They would rather just monitor her levels. Mm -hmm. The test out here for Cushing's disease Granted, I, they had to do it twice, remember, because they fucked up the first one. They didn't charge me for any of that. Um, yeah, it's true. The second one, when they actually did it, it was $60. $60. Six zero. $60. So. And they don't charge me for any visit. Like, I don't have, like, an office visit. Like, they literally only charge me for the things that they're doing. We've saved hundreds and hundreds of dollars yeah. maybe almost a thousand dollars because she's been to the easily a thousand dollars now she, she's been to the vet a lot of times since we've been here um and she's been a lot one because they're very willing to see her like, yeah they're like oh bring her in in two weeks let's check let's run more te-. they've done so many tests in the labs every time she, that she would come in they would take a skin sample of her crusties and then run it and compare it with the sample that they took two weeks prior like that probably, no cost no, no cost. Literally no cost at all. I'm like, do I have to pay today? They're like, no, it's okay. I'm like, holy shit. Right on, man. <laughs> right on. So. Like, holy shit. Now everyone there like knows her because she's yeah. always afraid. She's so afraid, so of, that afraid place. of that place. It's terrifying. It's sad. Um, She'd probably but, kill one of us if we were like, you never have to go there again. You just have to kill one of us. She'd probably kill. <laughs> she's that afraid of that place. She would never kill one of us. Like, That's true. But yeah, so. pretty excited. Not sure if you guys have been following on. Oh, side one last thing. The ultrasound, mm. they told me it's 1400 pesos, which is like 50, six, 58, six, somewhere between 1400. So you're probably talking like 65, something like that. Yeah, between 55 and $65 for an ultrasound an of ultrasound. her abdomen. Bro. They were like, it's 1,400 pesos. Do you want to do it? I'm like, fuck yeah, I want to do it. Can we do you it t- today? You said 1,400, <laughs> not 14,000? Okay, yeah, let's do it. I'm like, what? Yeah, that so would have been equally another $500 in the States. There's definitely things down here that are not less expensive. Her, medic, her prescription food, oh. not expensive. It's actually very expensive. It's $100 per like 20-pound bag. Yeah, dog food for her special dog food, very expensive, yeah, but, but it's these other helping. things yeah. like anything that seems medical, surgical, anything like that, whether it's for dogs, whether it's for humans, yeah. not, expensive. not expensive. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. The that's random things are expensive, like oil changes. Like, yeah. <laughs> Stupid stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty excited because I'm not sure if you guys have seen on Instagram or TikTok, but a lot of people have been making cheeseburger tacos lately. <laughs> and we are going to make cheeseburger tacos tonight. Yeah, like a Big Mac taco. Big Mac taco. I Although, know some of you guys have seen that shit because, I mean, granted, I clicked on it once and now they flood my feed with it, but looks awesome. I will say the Thousand Island here in Mexico is not the same Thousand Island in the States. Very so. true. Not the same. Has, I don't know. You a different the, tang to it. I can't pinpoint what it is, but. It's like maybe. it's been out in the sun for a while and then <laughs> no. you come home and you shower. <laughs> it's a different tang to it. Uh, Speaking of different tang, I've eaten six mangoes today. You had six today? I had one earlier and I just cut up and ate five of them. I thought you cut them up for later. I don't no, know. No. You ate them all right now. Yeah, one sitting, five in one sitting. So that begs the question: Is it going to have a similar effect <laughs> on me as like apple juice does, where I'm going to be shitting my brains out later? <laughs> I don't know. They were fantastic. The mangoes here are so good. They're so good. So, um, Although yeah, we, we did kind of overpay for mangoes today. Yeah, these mangoes. God, some of these places they vary so much in their price. We paid ninety cent per mango today. Mm-hmm. Which is way That's too expensive. That's way too expensive. The yeah. Person didn't have prices on it. I think he gave us those fucking guaylo prices. Yeah. Should have gave us, or we should have gave him our 
card. Yeah, You're like, hey, we live here, you don't. asshole. Don't overcharge me. So mm. mangoes were good, though. That's that's a good thing. Yeah, they were good. Um, we watched UFC yesterday. Last night, yep. Yep, that was... Aljo and... Some good fights. Aljo and Cejudo. Cejudo. Uh, big win for Aljo. And, uh, some other exciting fights. There were some good fights, but... Had some great food over at a friend's house. Oh my gosh! Yeah, we every the last couple of times we've watched fights over there, it's been like a potluck style. Like bring mm-hmm. everyone brings something, and this one couple that goes, they she only eats chicken and fish, but as she's been as making some. Goes. Yeah, but she's been making some bomb like bean dip and like they made Spanish rice last night. Oh, Spanish rice was delicious. The yeah. bean dip was also oh delicious. Gosh. Just, I mean, I ate a ton. So good. Speaking of eating a ton, we went to a cool new seafood restaurant. Oh, yeah. Um, had some good tacos, mm-hmm. tostadas. Uh, very delicious. Pretty affordable. I mean, yeah. granted, we spent like 30. We spent 30 bucks with tip for the both of us. which yeah. And that's like a higher end place here. I had <laughs> like, three tacos and a tostada. I had one taco and one tostada. Which was basically two tacos because yeah. it was very large. It and was, a I, I had to eat it with a fork and knife. Like. And then we had a drink. <laughs> Yeah. Both got some nice sparkling lemonade, yeah. but it was very good. Mm-hmm. Very, very good. So we'll be taking my parents back there. Yeah. Um, let's hop into. Highs and lows. Ho ho. So, highs, like I mentioned, not a whole lot happened this week, um, but I am excited to start diving into some of these new parenting books people have been suggesting um, to me. I'm getting heavily back into my reading, and I'm going to float in a few books. So, parenting books obviously give us some more things to talk about on this podcast, but excited to talk about some of those and start reading those. Also look forward to you going full time mm. here starting this next week. Yep. So pretty excited about the King Family Agency. KFA. Being coming in hot. A full person. Not sure where I was going with that sentence. <laughs> um and oh yeah, you sent me that video of that place in Guatemala and I almost came in my pants. <laughs> so good holy shit that was fucking incredible we have, it's, i bet it's only like a hundred bucks to fly there too like we're gonna have to go we were they're supposed like, to go to guatemala they're like check this out 47 dollars a night i'm like uh, <laughs> oh my god this <laughs> right looks on, so good right on the water too that looked incredible yeah well, so i have to go take a quick trip over there yeah definitely gonna have to see what that's about because good lord folks i will post it back in the story <laughs> um I'll do it tomorrow after the podcast drops. Because we need to book our reservations first before you fucks go and take it. There's not a chance you fucking people are going. <laughs> to be honest. It's a podcast about parenting, not traveling. <laughs> Guatemala. Yeah. looks. I mean, you guys will shit your pants. It looks amazing. <sighs> amazing. Make sure you're wearing a diaper when you <laughs> check this video out. But anyways... <laughs> To look beautiful. Pretty, pretty cool. So thanks for sending me that. You're welcome. Um, I'll add it to the list. Lowe's was was my best week mentally, but you know, mm. that happens. Just one of those weeks where I was very busy. Business wasn't great. Um, but this next week's gonna be a good one. So yeah. That's what happens. It's a circle. You got highs it's highs points and low points, but Sometimes it's always changing. Time. Sometimes you're at the bottom, and you go back up to the top. And then you go back to the bottom. Back to the bottom. It mm-hmm. never ends. But this next week will be at the top. So what about you? Highs, lows, lows, highs? Uh, my my high is that, um, you know, I'm. it was, it was kind of bittersweet. I don't think it's actually hit me that I'm leaving my company yet. Um, but when I sent out my farewell email on Monday um, to our our group as a whole, the financial institutions group within my company. I got a lot of really nice feedback. Um, You know, people saying like, oh, we're going to miss you so much. Like, They weren't like, who's this? (laughs) 
Yeah, those people just forgot dinner, about you. didn't respond. But I had a lot of nice messages of people just saying, like, hey, it's been so awesome. Like, what are you, what are you going to do? And I just said, hey, well, you know, we're moving to Mexico. I'm going to work with my husband. And they're like, oh, my God, so jealous. Like, you think they keep of, in touch. You, said that, you think they said that kind of stuff to Mark and Natasha when they left? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, they didn't send a farewell because they were. Like, hey, guys, I'm leaving. Were. Not by choice. No. <laughs> They, I, mean, I guess you're not. We got updated choice, after they left. Like, by the way, Mark and Natasha are no longer here. We're like, oh. That's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, so I had some really nice, some really nice feedback that made me feel good. Um, so that, you know, closing that chapter, I'm so excited for this next one. I'm more so excited to be helping you in my full capacity. Um, I think we have a lot more that we can do, especially together, especially once you dive in and, you know, really get in the routine of the things that we're doing on a daily basis. Yeah. The sure calls everybody will be much more excited to see you on all the calls and yeah, everything. I know they always get so excited when they see me and I'm like, oh, stop. Yep. It. They'll be much <laughs> less excited when they see you every day. I now. know exactly. Now I'm They're just like, like there's nice Amanda commodity. again. <laughs> <laughs> Here she is full time. Like the yeah. rest of us. You'll pretty up the place a bit. So yeah. that's good. Thanks. I'm, I'm super excited for that. Um, you know, bittersweet. But I have my exit interview tomorrow, so we'll see how that goes. Um, as far as my low, it was basically basically just Nina. A combination of a lot of feelings about leaving my company that I've been with for 13 years. And then um, Nina, I just don't, you know, we're, the vets are going down the list trying to figure out what's happening. And if it's what she wrote down as a possible thing, that's not it's a fucking good, worse. It's worse. Worse than... Cushing. Yeah. So, so um, keep your guys' little doggy paws, fingers crossed. Yeah. So we'll we'll see. But I'm a little concerned for her. And then she, she like pulled a hammy or something. So now she's yeah. like sporadically limping, but Fucking it's not walking consistent. Her ass <laughs> the other day, and so some fireworks had gone off like a few days ago outside, and now she's just like gets so scared of things, and it like sticks with her. I thought dogs forgot about shit like pretty quickly. <laughs> she, Nina doesn't forget. Not her. Apparently. Doggy doesn't forget. So I was out walking her uh, to go to the bathroom and she's got this harness that we put on her and it's too big. Because she's lost like 12 pounds. It was too big when we got it and it's way too big because yeah. she's lost weight. And so I was walking her down her spot where she usually goes poop and she got like freaked out about something and she slipped out of her harness and then... She's super bad at listening. Like, <laughs> she doesn't give a fuck what you're saying. <clears throat> if she's afraid of something, you can't tell her I'm anything. like, come in, come in. And she's just like running, like just running across our apartment complex area. And I'm all <laughs> worried because I'm like, oh, she's going to get hit by a car or something. And she runs like all the way back to the place and then stops basically right down by just past the car, like. At the front of the door oh area. Oh, my God. I'm able to put the harness back on. I was like, you are a bad girl. And I think at that point in time, she pulled a hammy when yeah. she sprinted. When she sprinted, because she doesn't sprint very often. No. So she normally get a seizure if she does. Do so I feel bad for you? Sprint. Yes. Is it your fault? Yes. yes. <laughs> so you live with that sprained hammy. Luckily, you don't do a whole lot of active stuff, so <laughs> you'll be able to recover fairly quickly because you just so. lay around. Yeah, yeah she's limping every once in a while i'm like are you okay and then she'll like not limp and i'm like mm, okay i'm watching you yeah uh, so anyways hopefully she'll be okay not from the hammy thing she'll recover from that but as far as the <laughs> the possible liver failure yeah. yeah hoping that's not the deal um to take one set of a bit bad news into <laughs> some other <laughs> Not For great the entire news. Channel no, no. 4 News team, I'm Veronica Corningstone. And I'm Ron Burgundy. Go fuck yourself, San Diego. Alrighty, so you had mentioned this earlier, and I'm like, oh, I better look that up real quick, because a lot of people were somewhat concerned when we were like, hey, we're going to move to Mexico, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and yada, 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 and we're mm -hmm. going to move these other countries, and people are like, oh, you better be okay, you better be careful, especially if you have kids, like, watch out. Yeah. There have been 131 mass shootings with four or more people wounded or killed so far in 2023 in the oh, U.S. More. compared to 113 this time last year. The United States has faced at least 190 mass shootings so far this year, 
according to Gun Violence Archive, there have been more mass shootings than days in 2023. You know, a lot of you people are concerned about, you know, us moving to Mexico, you potentially moving other places. There's some shit going on in the U.S. right now and has been for a while, and it doesn't really seem like it's getting that much better. It's just get progressively getting worse every year. I mean, the shootings, the whatever's happening in the government, like the presidential stuff, and you may think Biden was shit, Biden is shit, Trump was shit, Trump was shit. What else is it going to be? It's going to be some loser next time, too. Like, Hopefully not, but probably. Not saying that other countries are a better option, but a lot of people are leaving, and it doesn't seem like that bad of an idea now. Granted, you may not have 100% of the freedoms that you do in the U.S. or the luxuries of certain things, but I'm telling you, I haven't noticed anything different here living in Mexico. No. I, there's, like, small luxury things that there's definitely luxury things that like you may central not have. heating and cooling not the end of the world however like having meh. the ability to get fantastic internet anywhere <laughs> we didn't get fantastic internet a lot of places we lived in fucking the u.s especially phone service <laughs> stuff like that there was all sort all times when my yeah. phone's like verizon's like nah homie att's like not us either man i would say the internet and the cell reception in our particular building is the is the worst part about being here. But that yeah. would change if we literally moved across the street. Like, yeah. it's, I don't feel unsafe here in any way. I've never felt unsafe here. Nope. I would be completely fine walking from here to the beach, which takes an hour, at night. Like, there's no part yeah. of me that would question anything about safety. There are tons of police around here, yeah. always driving. Like, it. I don't know. But... Whatever we're doing, whether you're for guns, you're not for guns, that's just one of the major problems, whatever is going on in the U.S. There's a lot of other things that are going on. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, if you're worried about moving outside of the country because... You're afraid of, oh, the cartels. Yeah, or, you're afraid of whatever, wherever those places may be. I'm telling you guys. I feel way safer here than... It's not anywhere as bad as america makes it out to be and i think that's one of the big things is they're like hey if we make everybody afraid of other places to live then they'll stay here yeah i think one of my biggest concerns as far as like having a child in the states is the amount of school shootings that happen it, like, i never thought it doesn't i mean it makes sense i was always like oh fuck that really sucks but like you know, obviously we don't have any kids yet, but just like the thought of like that. I know a lot of people have similar concerns that have children. Like that's supposed to be the safest place that you can put them in. And that ends yeah, up being I'm not one there with of my the kid, like. unsafest place to put them. And, you know, so, um, you know, whether we homeschool in the future or, but it's like, I've never heard of any thing happening like that in Europe or in. Well, it's because there's, Heavy gun laws heavy gun everywhere laws, else, yeah. basically. The yeah. U.S. is one of the only places that has the ability to get firearms like that. And again, not saying we're either for or against guns, but that's a huge red I flag. I don't think regular civilians should have any form of assault weapon in any capacity. I think that should only be for military um, purposes. But whatever, whatever. I mean, we <laughs> see what the results are. Yeah. So... Whatever that solution is, um, somebody needs to fix it because yeah, I thought it's it was 199. Very, it's very sad. 190. Well, again, I don't know when you heard that information. I grabbed this information. This could have been gotcha. last month or something. There could oh, have been more yeah, that I read that this morning. Yeah, so from the shade room. More mass shootings. So yeah, 199 mass shootings so far this year, I believe, yep. where at least four or more people have died. So, anyways, on a lighter note, I was going to say, let's do the drop for Ask the Listeners, but I don't have a drop for it. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. it's time to ask, ask the listeners, listeners. It's time to ask the listeners. Are you for or against guns? No. no. We're not we're getting not into that. Yeah, we're not getting into that. So, the question for the listeners was, if you had to use, and this is based off of us finishing up the parent test and styling of parenting and all of that stuff. If you had to use three words to describe your parenting style, what would they be? Mm. So. I don't even know. Yeah, I'm going to let you think a little bit. I have two off the top of my head that I think are 
kind of spot on to what we've talked about, our style of uh, parenting. First one would be discipline. Mm-hmm. The second one would be supportive. Yeah. Don't know what the third style would be that we or third word. We can think about that, but I'll go over some some other ones from listeners here. So this person said secure, hands on and empowering. This person said fair, firm and consistent. That's it. This person said repairing childhood trauma. <laughs> Uh, They're basically just like, yeah, I think everything I do based on my parenting is based off of... Repairing your own childhood trauma. Yeah, Yeah. making sure I'm not a shitty person like the people who fucking raised me were. Uh, This person used four words like an asshole, didn't follow the rules. I'm totally joking. I appreciate you writing in. Um, Going with the flow. Okay. Which sounds like uh, free range. Yep. Uh, We've got hoping to survive. (laughs) <laughs> Another <laughs> very important one. Uh, Kat said, badass parenting style. I can see that. She's pretty cool. We've actually got another one that says, trying to survive. And then the last one says, empathy, accountability, and courageous slash strong. Oh. So, listeners, what would you consider your three words to describe your parenting style? Do you agree with the, the two that I brought up? Disciplined, supportive. You could say loving, but every parent is going to be, you know, ideally that's something that you don't even have to describe. You should be loving. Yeah, definitely. Supportive, disciplined. Maybe like, yeah, just, I don't know. I like the empowering, like the enforcing the confidence of, of our children with themselves that they can, mm-hmm. you know, if they work hard at something, they can achieve, or maybe they won't need to work very hard at something and they'll still achieve it. Or, you know, just kind of like try all the things, figure out what you like and what you're good at. And I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I think another one would be maybe flexible. Like us as parents, or, you know, going to be parents, and I think even parents now, you don't know everything. No. And so you have to be flexible and willing to admit, like, hey, you know, maybe sometimes my kid may make a point or they may enlighten me on something that I maybe don't know anything about because I'm older and they're younger and they're around the new things that are happening, and I have to be flexible to, you know, adjusting my parenting style or flexible to them giving me information that maybe I wasn't aware of, like, hey, you know, you're being a little too hard on me for this. Or if you're telling me I'm being too hard, if I'm telling you you're being too strict. A little more like adaptive. Yeah. Open communication. Mm -hmm. Trusting to have those conversations. Trusting, I definitely think, is a good one. But Uh, But how do you implement that? Yeah. All hardcore questions and the journey mm-hmm. of life. <laughs> so, again, guys, what are your three descriptive words for your style of parenting? Hmm. Speaking of styles of parenting. It's time for that super sweet overseas parenting fact of the week. It's time for that super sweet yawn while we're oh doing our podcast. So I'm sorry, we were up till one o'clock. It's so late. Yeah. God, the freaking <laughs> living over... On We're the not even in se- Eastern. Yeah, this is central time. The fact that UFC fights and basketball games and stuff come on so late. They are done at midnight, like last so night. And they were done at like 12.30. We had to drive home. How do people live on the East Coast? <laughs> if you like anything to do with sports, especially if you like grew up on the West Coast and now you yeah. live on the East Coast and you support West Coast teams, you don't anymore because no. you never can watch them without staying up. 12 hours past your bedtime. And our room gets light in the morning. So, like, I wake up. Yeah. At eight. I think I'm pretty sure the light starts comes at, at like 6 30. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm tired. Guys. Let's talk tired. about this overseas parenting. So, we're still going with old styles of, because there's only old so US? many types of information that I can find yeah. on other people's parenting styles. As we travel more and we'll find some more stuff. You know how they don't parent in Medellin? Uh, 
We don't see any kids. <laughs> so like, they no. just don't fucking have kids, I guess. I don't know where the people come from. They just moved there already grown up. Um, this is in the 1950s. So in the 1950s, experts believed that baby proofing your home was a sign of lazy parenting and that children should learn what not to touch by their parents yelling at them. Yelling at them. That sounds fucking exhausting. Oh my gosh. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. Oh my God. Don't, like, that. don't stick your fingers in the plug. First of all. They don't even know what the fuck you're saying. Yeah. And outfitting your home, baby proofing it, is a lot of work. I would say that's not taking a shortcut. Oh, yeah. Like all these cabinets that have something dangerous in them. Like, Toilet seats. Like all of yeah. these. How many babies and stuff drowned in shit back then? How many got into like poisons and these type House of things? House cleaners, because, yeah. yeah. Because you were not being well, lazy. Yeah, that's... So. <laughs> just yelling at your kids. Yeah, all the time. That sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, just like, gosh. Kids are always doing shit they're not supposed to be doing. Yeah, dude. If you have baby-proof stuff on, then they like can't get in the cabinet. You're like, cool, I don't have to like, tell them. <laughs> Because I already baby proofed it. <laughs> Running around sharp edged tables and stuff. Gosh. <laughs> Telling you. Like, granted, there's going to be things like, you know, qu- chairs and stuff that you're going to have to keep an eye on. But, I mean, that's not going to kill them. These chairs might, yeah, I These scratch things. my leg on yeah, this chair. Fucking hurt. Um, there's one more. Oh. Another one from the 50s. Okay. Great advice for new mothers in the 50s was to strip. And let me explain. Mothers who reported feeling sad after their babies were born were not instructed to go and see a doctor or a psychiatrist, but to strip furniture. Meaning like taking a piece of wood, stripping off the whatever's on it and then restaining it restaining it that's how it's supposed to build their self-confidence no fucking idea what the fuck i'm like obviously you don't mean strip at a strip club like. probably build a little <laughs> bit more self-confidence doing that than oh. you would restaining like, a piece of furniture i restained this table i feel much better about my postpartum the 50s, depression <laughs> they were probably like hey man this is a man's job so if you can do it you should feel good check about this out yourself. gary i just Fucking stripped and restained the kitchen table <laughs> while your ass was, I don't know, doing what? <laughs> Watching sports? Oh my gosh. So, you know, maybe that is a confidence builder. I don't know how it's building confidence in your body. No. But uh, it's not. But people were already drinking and smoking and stuff, like while well, breastfeeding and pregnant and all that stuff back then. Very true. Still I wonder like, if yeah. their cigarettes were like better, better for back you? then. Like they didn't put the 99 things plus the rat poisoning in it. Yeah, I'm sure it was probably just rolled tobacco. That's definitely better for you. Yeah. If you're going to smoke, roll your own. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Anything to say about that? You want to start stripping furniture? We don't have like a ton of furniture to strip around here. You know, I like doing furniture projects with you. Like when we did um, like the mountains and stuff like that. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Maybe not right after you're pregnant. I don't know if smelling no. all those fumes and no, stuff is good. No, that probably wouldn't be very good at all. I mean, you're not even like allowed to touch soil and yeah. shit. Yeah, exactly. One of the things we did talk about that I forgot to bring up was really want to start focusing on, we moved out of the country. I want to start doing more things. Like we're doing better financially now, partially because we moved out of the country, partially because... You know, our cost of living is low. Cost of living is lower. You know, the job and everything that we're doing is going well. But I want to focus on giving back. And so I started looking up trips that we could go on. Yes. In Central America, f- mostly Central and South America, that focused like, hey, you could go to this place for a week. So we can go to Guatemala for a week and not only do some of the things that we wanted to do and explore, but also help at an animal sanctuary help build a school, help, you know, do all of these different things. And they're crazy affordable prices. You actually get to stay with people who live like there. Like a local family, local yeah. Local family. They cover, like, breakfast and dinner. And it's, like, a couple hundred bucks to do this type of thing because yeah, you you're coming in, you work for uh, four to seven hours a day, depending on the type of work that you're doing. And 
yeah, you actually get to make a difference, see a new awesome spot. The rest of the time, you get to yourself to go and do. Yeah, that would be what you want to do. That'd be super awesome, especially. I mean, these areas. Um, you know, especially if you're getting more like the outskirts and the farmlands and stuff. Like, I'm not. F- I would assume they don't have the modern uh, facilities and and things like that, and just kind of like the manpower. Um, I'm sure they're not traveling to all these other places to see what's working in more modern cities and then coming back with those ideas. So it'd be really nice to go somewhere that already, you know, someone's already figured out the plan and you're just like, Hey man, I, I got helping hands. I'm just here to help. Like, yeah. tell me what to do. I imagine um, the, that's one way to like really feel a place. Yeah. Just go there. You're working with the people that are living there. You're helping them. Yeah. And they're also obviously going to be in a similar mindset of like, Hey, we want to do better for this area and you know whether you're meeting other people that are traveling to do the same type of work and just the local people that want to better their own community Mm -hmm. I think that's super cool yeah so definitely looking into that you can take kids and stuff as well with the program so you know again super affordable we could catch a plane down to Peru or Guatemala or something for a couple hundred bucks Yeah, one to three hundred bucks pay a couple hundred bucks for a week stay and you know help help make an impact i wonder if we both went if we would only have to pay one accommodation huh. if we're sharing I mean, a bed. I'm sure they'd maybe a little more out. for food or in some yeah. other thing <laughs> who knows we're like we're a team Try the kings out. yeah well now yeah, four hands it is time for oh boy i'm pretty sure you killed it last week <laughs> So, a lot of pressure. Okay, got some questions here for you. You did real well last week, so Uh these might be a little tougher. Okay. I love the 90s trivia questions. Question number one. What sport... Did the 1992 Dream Team play? Basketball? Yes, that is correct. (laughs) Knuckles, good job. All right. Some of you may think, wow, that was super easy. Some of you may think, I have no fucking idea. I don't watch a lot of basketball, so. (laughs) Here we go. This this may be a bit more up your alley. What was the best-selling game console of the 90s? Nintendo 64. Wrong. Sega... Wrong. PlayStation. That is correct. <laughs> Where's my the PS2. Horn? Where's my horn that goes? Is it the PS2? They just said PlayStation. Okay, I'm assuming PS2. Probably the PS2 because yeah. that's when I got mine, and I love that thing. Yeah, that's when we had ours. I played Spyro. How did I know you were gonna metal. say fucking Nintendo 64? Nintendo 64. <laughs> I think that was a little bit past its. Prime. Definitely uh. still popular, but if you're bringing out things like PlayStation, kids are like, fuck are these graphics? Yes. Playing Spyro. I'm playing Crash Bandicoot. Yes. True. Crash Bandicoot. Question number three. What 90s film was the first to be fully made com- fully made by computer animation? Hint, it is a Disney, Disney classic. Movie. Wait. First fully animated. It's not the same... Thing okay. we talked about with Beauty and the Beast that was like for winning an award or something. This is the first film to be fully done computer animated. Think back. Lion King? No, but probably. God, I don't even know if it was before that. I'm not sure. The 90s? A huge movie. They made multiple of them. Oh, The Land Before Time. No. Oh. <laughs> you up? Toy Story. Toy Story. Dang, I, n- I wouldn't have story. gotten that. No? It's classic. I should have said, uh, they wrote Andy on the bottom of his boots. Yeah, that would have just totally given it away. Mm, how smart you are. <laughs> Last question. How many basketball titles did Michael Jordan win in the 90s? How many NBA championships did he win? Six. Woo! <laughs> nice. Good job. <laughs> How'd you know that? 
think it was playing in the last dance this morning. Yeah, well, I'm surprised <laughs> that you were able to gather that information from there. Soak it in. All righty. Well, um, did you have something you specifically want to talk about? I have a few more things to talk about. But yeah, just something from my podcast. Toss it over to you. Oh, you have your own podcast. <laughs> no, not from my own podcast. <laughs> Fucking bitch. <laughs> Talking about, oh, you make me do this podcast and yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you're only doing trending. it. She's got her own podcast. She's <laughs> talking shit on it. So I do this dumb podcast with my husband about parenting. So lame, so boring. So um, when I had told, I had, um, so I was working on some of the renewals coming up for July for, um, you know, the job that I am no longer going to be working at. Anyways, one of the bankers, um, he called me and he was like, oh my gosh, um, you know, I'm so curious about what you're doing. You said you're living in Mexico. My wife and I want to move to Portugal. Let's, they're actually coming to Cancun in two weeks, so we're going to meet up with them. Anyways, nice. he told me about this uh, podcast that he's been listening to. Um, about It's called Radical Personal Finance. The reason he brought it up to me is because I had said something about we want our kids to be bilingual, and he said there was a very recent episode that was done about teaching kids um, like the best way to teach kids multiple languages, things like that. Anyway, so I listened to that episode first and then I started scrolling through. This guy's got like a thousand episodes. Uh, but I saw he has a 16 part series of like how to invest in your children at a very young age. And I've been listening to these at the gym. Um, so very quickly, I just wanted to go over like the, the first part, which um his episodes are very long. They're like over an hour, like an hour and a half. But one particular part. Real quick. I want to know if you're a listener and you have a child that speaks any other language besides mm -hmm. Spanish because you're Mexican. Mm -hmm. Like, write in, let us know. I'd really yeah. like to know because so few Americans speak any other languages. Yes. Granted, if you have Spanish, you know, descent in your family, then there's a good chance that you may speak Spanish. A lot of people don't. Yeah, a lot they of are don't. Spanish. Yeah. But just want to know. Anybody out there with kids speak multiple languages? Yes. Right. Um, okay. So he was talking about the importance of, even before you have kids, the importance of picking a spouse and the Very things important. that go into picking a spouse. And some of the comments, um, is the ratings say that like his verbiage is a little arrogant. So right I, up my alley. yeah, I'm like, eh, you know, I can see what he's saying. So um, the, he was talking about like, oh, you need to make sure that you pick someone that one is healthy. Like you want healthy, you want strong, you want good looking, you want intelligent. Like don't be afraid to be selfish in the things that you want to pass down. Um, one of the reasons being is that um, intelligence is highly hereditary. And our kids fucked. <laughs> No, I'm pretty smart. Actually, my, my family's not that. My sister's yeah, your really sister's, smart. Yeah. So I guess my parents yeah, are really smart. Your parents too. are very smart too. So I did, we did well. Yeah. We did well. Um, I used to like some dumb chicks. So <laughs> I used to like some really dumb yeah. dudes. So <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> they met up with each other. <laughs> Created more dumb babies. Oh, gosh. Um, so, anyways, it, it, he was talking about that um, the way that um, kind of intelligence is determined so basically he was talking about the iqs of people who have certain degrees of college and basically you can assume okay if you have someone with a college degree and someone with a college degree there's like a 50 percent chance that the, that their kid's going to go to college but if you have someone with a graduate degree and someone else with a graduate degree there's an 80 percent chance that their child is also going to hmm. go to college so there's he called it the regression to the mean which says that um, kids are neither as smart or as dumb as their parents. They fall somewhere in the middle, around 40% um, of the population mean from their parents. So anyways, this led me to research a little bit about how intelligence is hereditary. And it's um, actually one of the most hereditable traits. It, it, and they say that it starts at 20% in infancy and it goes up to 60% when you're an adult. And it can peak at 80% in late adulthood and then drops back down to 60. So what, what that means... Yeah, I was going to say, what do you, what yeah, do you mean so by that? Yeah, so this is how much, based on a percentage, how much of your intelligence is influenced by genetics. So hmm. 
nature versus okay, nurture. Okay, so very low when you're young, obviously. You because you're being influenced by what your parents are doing, the, the, the means of how you're being taught to interact. You have a very heavy environmental influence when you're young, so the genetic factor plays a very small role. Makes sense. As okay. you get more older and more independent in your thoughts. As you get more older. <laughs> As you get older, <laughs> I'm very <Stop> intelligent. <laughs> um, I just want to make a quick comment. Intelligence is based on the ability to learn, reason, and solve problems. It's not based on your IQ. Yeah, it's not based on <laughs> words, big <laughs> words that you use in sentences. <laughs> learn, Assholes. reason, and solve problems. Learn, reason, and solve problems. Okay, um, that's interesting. So, I would have thought it was IQ. No, IQ is actually not hereditary. But your intelligence oh, is other factors. I'm super intelligent. IQ not that high. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Intelligence isn't based. They used to call on that street smarts versus book smarts. So that's that's funny. Someone in another blog that I was reading, I was going through a whole bunch of articles. Someone was talking about that, like the dad is book smart, the mom is people smart, and then he was like, my sister is book smart, and I am more a people reader like my mom. Does that mean that I'm less intelligent than my sister? But we both have a quick ability to learn, reason, solve problems, things like that. So that's why these these kinds of things are kind of hard to measure because how do you measure intelligence? So the grand scheme of it is based on the ability to learn, reason, and solve problems. Hmm. Okay. Anyways, um, so the there was a very interesting study that was done about this, and it had identical twins mm -hmm. that were separated at birth, and they grew up differently. For the study, they're like, let's split these kids up. <laughs> yeah, they did it. <laughs> we need it for the study. <laughs> so one child had essentially like a lower IQ parent raising them, and the other one was with the biological parents. If intelligence was based on environmental factors, then one kid would have had a higher intelligence than the other. But even mm -hmm. though they both were raised in different situations, their intelligence remained equal throughout their whole lives so is this sister sister, plot of sister, <laughs> I know, sister? right? <laughs> wow that's um, super interesting yeah so and that's kind of what led them to or like all these obviously they did a whole bunch of other tests on twins because that's the most accurate accurate way to read i don't know how often they're separating twins or like finding like hey did you have an identical twin that your parent didn't tell you about let's so go are find they them. saying that your your circumstances your situation your parents can only fuck up your intelligence for so long before like your surroundings before you start to tap into more of your genetic intelligence yeah i wouldn't want to say fuck up they just environmental factors don't real don't impact your intelligence as much as people previously thought like it's ba it's uh 60 to 70 percent genetic and 30 to 40 percent environmental so mm -hmm. even if you have parents that are not being that interactive with you as a child you will still have the same intelligence level than if you had parents that were like super involved so like it's very heavily on the genetic factor Good. Hopefully um, we can test for that and see how we can take iq tests but it said um as so Assortative mating is greater for intelligence than any other behavioral trait. All traits are subject to environmental influence and are not 100% how hereditary. However, intelligence is a very large one that is factored by who you mate with. So make sure you choose a good partner, very folks. Very important. And they also say that like, um, like drive, like work ethic and the like other like personality traits are also hereditary so mm. just because like one of the examples he was saying like oh someone you know two graduate level parents had a child the 80 percent factor they were saying that like the kid that went to college and decided not to graduate wasn't because he wasn't capable of graduating. It was because there was a lack of drive or some other behavioral factor, not because a kid isn't possible to graduate college. <laughs> I'm really getting after it in that dream, Nina. <laughs> Nina. Go. She is yeah, go. twitching go. in her face. She's making. like snarling. And stuff. <laughs> How she's sleeping while we're just fucking yapping on here is beyond me but she's an old lady yeah she's just like deep she in it. heard me talk about intelligence she's like oh god here <laughs> goes mom again with yeah, her facts I'm gonna go to sleep. 
Oh, man. So, and I'm like just laying my legs on her. <laughs> okay, I have a few more things to type. That was very interesting, though. Mm-hmm. It's very important who you're picking your spouse to be, who you're planning on having children with. Be selfish. Make Obviously, good choices. Yeah. You want somebody who is fit, who has good parents with good genes, who's smart, who's, you know, yeah, all of these healthy. Things. Your mortality, your your health overall, like you can look and see what you, like your spouse's family lineage has been and how long that they've lived and like what kind of health problems that their family tree has in their, you know, in their blood and stuff like that. So yeah, super, super interesting. Very yeah. important. Mm-hmm. Um, when do you stop? We don't have kids yet, obviously. Yeah. So this is a question for you people with kids. It's something I had kind of thought about a little bit. When do you stop giving your kids a kiss on the lips? Like, mm. at what age is that? I feel like it's a little different for moms than it is for dads. I know when I was growing up, uh, went through a stage where I stopped like kissing my mom on the lips. I don't recall at what age, but now that I'm older, I do it. Like I'll give her a little peck. Obviously, I'm not licking my lips and stuff before, <laughs> but just a real quick. Yeah, just a little. Love you, mom. Yeah. And sometimes it's on like the side of the mouth or whatever, but. Yeah, just like, hmm. I re- like yeah. I definitely think that there's different ways like to like you don't want to have soft lips like, yeah <laughs> like we're not tom okay. brady and our kids over here just <laughs> nah, <laughs> dumb, like. i think i remember being embarrassed like upper middle school like kiss me on the, my cheek don't kiss me on my mouth yeah like but yeah i think that's around probably the time and like i said it's probably a little different for moms because they're like hey i'll fucking kiss you on the mouth as long as i want i don't ever baby. remember my dad or stepdad kissing me i just saw on my face or anything or like, i mean I even on the top of my head i just saw uh when we were on one of the planes a guy with his little kid who was just like i think it was a little boy just kept kissing his little boy on the mouth and the kid was only like one or something no. but it's just like uh, that's, that's so cute. And the little kid, he's like, he would tell the little kid, give him a kiss. And the kid just yeah. leaning in. Well, that's kiss. when they do the open mouth, like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slobber just everywhere. But, yeah, I was just kind of wondering what, what are your guys' thoughts? When do you stop? I think elementary school is, is still a safe range. I mean, I would probably say, like, once the, once you start to get into that puberty age, I think maybe, like, okay, I'm going to Are you going to be kissing your, other people here soon? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Don't put your penis, a penis in your mouth and then come kiss your mom. <laughs> like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Hopefully gonna, that's later in high school, obviously. Chop that clip up. <laughs> you guys are getting that on Instagram. Jeez. <laughs> Heard it here first. Don't, Don't have a penis in your mouth and then kiss your mom. Okay. Next question. <laughs> when you were growing up, did you ever have something that your parents got you that you could hit when you were, like, really mad? Or did you personally have anything? Like, would you go beat the shit out of a pillow? Did you have one of those things that you punch and it, like, has sand in the bottom and it goes down and it comes back up? Did you have one of those Billy, like, punching guy things that you practice karate on and shit? Punching bag, anything? I feel like I had a a dang it doll. A dang it doll? Never heard of that. Okay, so that's funny because Brittany on a zoom call at work literally had one and was showing it a couple of days ago, but it's, it's like a kind of like a, I don't know, punching bag okay. filled, but it has like a little saying on it and it's like, Oh, when you're frustrated, throw me, you know, like, so it's like a dang it dollar. You can just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Interesting. And, yeah. It's like, and you had this one? big. I feel like I did at some point. I had stress balls. Um, we had a speed bag in our garage. Mm, okay. um, maybe that's where I got my quick hands from. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. That's funny. I've actually. She's like, I've actually fucked a lot of people up. Yeah, fucked a lot of people Spent up. Spent a lot of time on that speed bag. <laughs> 
Um, Britney's face is so stupid. <laughs> Sorry, Nina. She, she, like, Jesus. Um, but mm, I feel like shit. When Shane was younger, he had one of the. Re- it was a referee, but it wasn't a punching bag. It just had the weight at the bottom. So, you know, kids is like. Kind of makes me think of that kid <laughs> who hits the door and shit, and then cusses the door out. He's like, fuck you, fuck you, stupid door. I'm like, hmm, that kid could probably use something to beat up when he gets. And we had the um, all the forearm, yeah, the forearm things. You're like, oh, I'm so mad right yep. now. I'm gonna get these forearms yep. jacked. Exactly, <laughs> burning. Um, what about you? Um, I know I would go punch my pillows and stuff, and um, yeah, go punch pillows. Uh, we definitely had. I had those things that had the sand at the bottom where I would punch it and come back up and sometimes oh, it hit you. Yeah, you would, you would well, talk shit you. to him and stuff. <laughs> talk you don't want this? Uh, <laughs> what's over there? Mm, slap you. You're over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I just wonder, like, you know, kids get angry over dumb shit. Yeah. So because nice their emotions, yeah. their hormones are all over the fucking place. It'd be place. nice to have something where you could go take that out and, like, Punch and bag. You're like, all right, go beat the shit out of this. Yeah, you're like, punch and bag. if you're mad at me, go hit this thing. He's like, you mm-hmm. randomly see your kid out there. You're like, what the fuck did I do now? <laughs> you know, you're like, I don't know. You're always so angry. <laughs> you're raising a monster. You're yeah. like, this kid's very aggressive. <laughs> uh, because I know you pee a lot. Mm-hmm. And then it's you're going to pee a whole lot when you're pregnant. It's a problem I have. What are you guys' thoughts on pissing in the car? Like, if you have kids and you're driving somewhere and say you're alone, you don't have the other spouse with you, and you have to piss, and you got like maybe a three year old or a four year old, and then you got one that's young in a car seat. Obviously, they're both still in a car seat, but like a baby that's in a an extra duty mm-hmm. car seat. And you like really have to piss or something. What do you do when do you just like piss in a bottle this in the is car? Obviously for men only. Well, no, they have those things that you can. No, I'm not buying one of those. What's that called? It's like the. It's like the, the funnel. Yeah, <laughs> like the piss, the woman piss funnel thing. First of all, we would have to take our pants down to here. Yeah, God. like. Whoever created you guys wasn't like <laughs> super generous about. I want to make it easy to pee. No, it's difficult to pee. You're thinking you just like pee out your belly button or something, someplace you can get to without having to take your pants off. But anyways, for guys, I mean that seems reasonable, right? Like you if mean I like pull to, over? Yeah, if I want to pull over, but I didn't want to take the kids out of the car with me into the bathroom and just piss in a bottle in the well, car. Probably have to pee very frequently as well. I would I'm not really do that past a certain age because they're definitely going to tell mommy and they're going to tell the waiter at the restaurant you go to. They're going to tell everyone, daddy. My dad just pissing the bottle in the car. Yes, exactly. <laughs> You're like, hey, man, I'm not supposed to tell people that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So before they can talk, maybe after they can talk, I say it's a no go. Yeah, that's true. Your kids will tell anybody. They will tell you did the, your teacher. With no hesitation yeah. of thinking like it's weird. It's like. Dad peed in a car yesterday. My dad scratched his ass and smelled his fingers. <laughs> You're just like, wow, Jesus, okay. dude, come on. <laughs> like, see my dad pick his nose and eat it. You're like, oh, God. <laughs> That's kids though. They don't even like have a comprehension no. of what's going on. They're just like, oh, I said my my dad tells me not to pick my nose. I saw him pick his nose and then he put it in his mouth. I uh, there is this that guy on Instagram that makes those reels about his kids. And mm-hmm. one of them was about like, Oh, I took my kids to lunch. Like let's, re- he's replaying the scenario. And he's like, yeah, I'll have a beer. Um, and she's like, Oh, 12 or 16. And he's like, 12 ounce please. And it goes core memory. Dad had 12 beers. 12 beers. <laughs> and then it's like, then he comes home and he, there was something at the end where it was yeah, like something the, at the, the end, phone number. Yeah. So the phone number, she's like, Oh yeah. If you want to sign up for oh, yeah, yeah. reward points, like it text you your, your number to this thing or I don't know, something core memory. Dad gave his number to the waitress. <laughs> <laughs> like she's, so he comes home and the mom's like, Oh, how was your lunch with dad? He goes, Good. He had twelve beers and gave, beers and gave his number to the waitress. <laughs> like, obviously, that's not what happened. Hey, kids, kids will though. fucking say anything. Got to love it. Can't uh, wait. 
can't wait. I'm going to be like, yeah, I did do that stuff. <laughs> so you're going to be doing it too, buddy. <laughs> Last thing. Um, obviously, technology is advancing rapidly, mm-hmm. especially since we were young kids to the point where it is now. There was hardly any yeah, technology. no technology to now having all the technology. Now there's AI making songs. I don't know where it's going to be by the time our kids are a bit older, but what do you think the deal is going to be? What do you think is going to happen first? Do you think they're going to move the drinking age down to like, well, obviously our kids will be in places where drinking age is not 21 because mm-hmm. it's nowhere else but, but the, US. the U.S. I agree with but, the higher drinking age though. But what do you think is going to happen with like fake IDs? How good do you think that game's going to get? Because I know I had a fake ID and I know that shit like scanned and stuff when I would go to bars and it was like. I got so good at look at checking fake IDs. I took six in one night one time. Wow. Working at I used to do it right rock. across the street from you at Moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like what do you think? What do you think that's going to end up being? Because. They're going to do like fucking retina scans to get yeah. over. It's going to be like super simple. It's going to be like, all right, fingerprint or just like put your thumb on this and it tells you exactly the person. Yeah, I don't think because they're trying to like every time, like every couple of years, driver's license get more enhancements. Yeah. They're like, oh, more security layers. We more. put all these little shiny things on it. Yeah, and, and all these, these holograms and, and all this shit. So I don't know. Um, but again, what? at some 15, 18 years from now, there's no chance that they're going to be checking your ID no, I th- at a bar. Yeah, I think there's going to be some, everyone's going to have a fingerprint related to the government and you they're know, just going to go chip or something. Pew. People are just going to have like fake fingerprints on like, like James they did Bond with style. The, <laughs> like they did with uh, COVID when they would check your temperature and they shot you with the gun thing. Yeah. They're just like, oh, I'm going to hold this gun at you. Oh, it tells me exactly. Who you are. Who you are, how old you are. You're like, yeah. all right, you're good. Probably. I wouldn't be surprised. Fake IDs. Did you have a fake ID? Nope. No? I had no desire to really party, like go. Just out there sucking dick, no need to party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would go to house parties and stuff, but like I worked at School of Rock when I was 21 and that like really turned me off from the bars for like two years. Hmm. I was like, I'm oh. going to buy wine and drink at home. Yeah, working at the bar, that is a great way to... Really deter yourself. Yeah, I mean, I used to party when I worked at Moonshine for a while, but then after that, it's just like, all right, I'm good. I've done a lot of this, and I don't really feel like partying at the bars with these, especially as you get older. I'm like, ugh, everybody's young and dumb and drunk. (laughs) So annoying. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess... When did I start hanging out with Mason? That's when I started partying. <laughs> that was a while ago. But yeah, I guess you had a late start. You weren't yeah. along. You weren't a partier for... Because I was like going to college and stuff in my 20s. Like, I don't know. I didn't really get crazy at like going out to clubs and bars and stuff, I guess. So I never had a fake ID. I did at one point try and like see if I can manipulate my military ID but it wasn't like I was like you know what this is probably felony anyway so she was not in the military folks she just liked dudes that were yeah (laughs) well we'll end it on that fake IDs pissing in your car (laughs) great all the good stuff it's been a good podcast it's been an interesting one (laughs) <laughs> Episode 24. I had no idea what we were going to talk about this week, so I'm like, oh, this should be interesting. But good job. Thanks. Good girl, Nina. Time to go make Big Mac tacos. Big Mac tacos. Just I've been really super going. hungry all day, too. Yep. We'll see if I shit my brains out from those mangoes. <laughs> those mangoes probably not a good idea. All right, y'all. Peace. <laughs>